please record. This will be up on YouTube <laughs> now that I'm pressing record. Thank, let me just double check that. So you could watch this, you're ready to go. What do you do, where do you start? It almost always starts with all designs. Once you have all the parts uh, you know, collected, is the motors. The motors are pretty much the first one you would get because it's also the most tedious. Uh, what is it? Oh, Lucky Charms, Lucky Charms, that's it, that's it. If you're eating Lucky Charms, what do you eat first? Do you eat the, the wheat part or do you eat the marshmallows first? Now, the motors come with a bunch of stuff that you almost always won't need whenever you're doing a custom build. Uh, if you're building something pretty standard, it seems like the manufacturers included the screw lengths and stuff inside these little boxes for those standard builds. But be careful though. Because what can happen is, is if, your stat, if your motor screws are too long, you can drive up into the motor, and if you turn that bad boy on, it will conduct uh, on, the, uh, on the motor wires if, you, if you've broken through the enamel, if you scratch the enamel on the wires. And that's no good. Here we go. You're going to grab these bad boys, get your seven millimeter screws. Now, yeah, I know that's kind of troll, by the way. I just realized that. Yeah, that's definitely troll. Seven millimeters is not standard, but guys, it's eight millimeters, not seven. Scratch that. I, I, this, is, this is, though, I think kind of artifacts of printing, possibly. Um, and it really does come down to you want it as down to the millimeter as perfect as possible because you do not want to risk it poking up through the motor, right? Um, and with TPU as the feet, which is a really good idea, but it's also kind of tricky because it's going to give a little bit and, you know, you got to be careful. You're tightening it too strong and it's just not going to, uh, or it might poke up too much or it just might not, um, make a good enough a grip and it could strip what it is gripping and then, you know, fall out and your motor's gone. Okay. Eight millimeters is literally perfect. Okay. Eight millimeters, not seven. There you go. Okay. Let's get this done. This is actually worth stopping and talking about because this is something that caught me up quite a lot when I first started. The mounting pattern, as they call it, of this, this is, I believe, a 12 millimeter mounting pattern. The 1604s that I used before are a nine millimeter mounting pattern. Now I've designed this to fit both nine and 12, but you, when the first one you get on, which I didn't do, the first one you get on, you need to make sure it's all the way at the top, the end. Otherwise it wasn't like lining up for me. This motor wire was really like jacked down. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's not flush. It's actually further than this here. I uh, mean, should be fine though. Let me see. Yeah, no, we're fine. We're not just double check it. I uh, eyeball it. Make sure that this top part is not touching. With one of my frames, it actually was because the wires were supposed to sit down. And uh, Ajax, the same frame that you have, which is why we had to print the spacer because some motors will the wire part is just too fat and it will cause that to push up into the motor. So actually last night I had a customer uh, message me saying, hey, what's going on here? I said, oh, hey, you print this, you know, with TPU, 100% infill, you're good to go. And he did, and he's happy. I might do just only do one motors. I think I have to for time's sake. I'm just gonna do one motor because, and then I could stop there and you guys just do all the other four. It's one, it's the same uh, concept for all the motors. Yeah, that's gonna how I'm gonna save some time. All right, so imagine you've screwed all four motors on. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start getting prepared for this AIO to sit right here. Now this is the little bit of a tricky part because I made this specifically so that replacing the prop guards would be really easy because it would just slide right down on top of the AIO if nothing's in its way. It would slide right down on the top of the AIO. And so when it was time to replace the prop guards, you kind of got the, the, the lead, the battery leads out of the way and you kind of lift it up and boom, slapped on your new one, screwed everything back together. If you didn't need to replace the prop guards, but you just had to like service something, maybe you got the TX and RX wrong on your flight controller, um, you would actually just have to score, uh, unscrew four screws, take off the top, and then you have full access. So this was not, like the f building this the first time is a bit tricky, but once it's built up, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Okay. Anyway, so you're gonna get yourself some 12, and I did measure these. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> we'll see though. I got some 12 uh, millimeter M2 screws and you're gonna drive these bad boys up. Okay, there we go. We got our screws in. Now your flight controller might come with these gummies not put in. I'm not gonna go ahead and show you how to do that because it's, it's so annoying, but yeah. You're gonna put this down in and just double check that you have a little bit of motor screw length sticking up over the top. This one's not all the way up in. 
All right, there we go. That's good. So now that you got that, you have a little bit of room. You're going to need some M2 nuts, which I don't have. I for, that's the one thing I forgot. So I'll get a good, I don't actually need to get those now, though, because there's no need to put the nuts on until you're, very, you're done at the very end. All right, now you have that on there. You're going to grab your frame, okay, and get your soldering iron ready. What you want to do, though, is you want to get this on. Now, you can use flux if you want. I don't think I've, I've never really had to use flux if I'm using resin core which I, I, this is, this is uh, some nice stuff, Sankey. But if you're really new, I would say use some resin. Let's actually just do that, just so that you know kind of how to do it. You just kind of stick some resin on there. You actually can't really put too much. Resin's great. It helps quite a lot in the process. Uh, but you will have to clean the board afterwards, which is why I don't use it that often, because, you know, I'm kind of lazy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just resin all the motor pads. There we go. Oh, falling over. Okay. So now that I got resin on the motor pads, watch how this goes now. Let me try to get this back where it belongs. Okay. Here we go. Let's see how much faster and much nicer this is. I can just wipe the tip off. Uh, I don't find the brass brushes to clean the tip enough. Paper towels work a lot better in my experience. Notice I'm trying to touch the soldering iron to the side of the pad. That's why one of the reasons why I really like this board, because I'm touching the side of the pad and trying to feed the top of the pad. You're not trying to feed the tip of the soldering iron. You're trying to, you're trying to heat up the pad and feed the solder to that pad. And that's, that way you know it's taking. Okay, and I, so I'll come back through sometimes and just do it a couple times. And the reason why that's important for the motor wires, and here's the battery leads. These ones take a little bit longer and you might have to kind of get your soldering iron up and around it to kind of spread that heat around especially for the negative terminal. Okay, actually for this one, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna come back with a bigger tip. Don't be lazy and like, like change your tips for every, like when I'm gonna solder these little tiny guys, I'm changing to a small tip. When I'm soldering the battery leads, I'm changing to a big tip. For like five inch drones though, I usually use the big tip for both the battery, le or the, uh, yeah, the battery leads and the motor pads as well, okay? There's not much of a danger. If you see how fast I'm going, I'm actually going pretty slow. I don't feel like this soldering is going very well today. I think it's this tip. I don't know, uh, this tip might not be so good. Your, a good tip is gonna make your life a whole lot better. But you don't really wanna go slower than this because these little tiny boards, you can, you can damage them if you overheat them. All right, so I'm switching to the bigger tip to do the battery leads. It's one of the reasons why I like this. I actually took the screw out of this just so I can swap really fast. <laughs> it just kind of saves me some time. Okay, and we're gonna redo this battery lead here. Gonna try to get on the side. Yeah, and just kind of, that's much better. There we go, that's much better. Now I always flip it over and just give, give a visual inspection. Like if you can see right here, uh, this one's way too big, so I'll just hit that real quick and pull it away, wipe the tip, hit it real quick, pull it away, wipe the tip. There we go. Let's kind of go around. I, yeah, I, I really feel like uh, this is not the best soldering job I've ever done. Don't really know what's going on, but it could be the weather, could be the tip, who knows. But just, you know, take your time, go back, and clean it up a little bit. And there we go. That's looking a lot better. I do not like this ice creaming right here. I, I cannot handle it. No ice cream for you. So just go back and hit it just one more time real fast. There we go. Yeah, and actually this is exposing to us that our pads didn't really take so well that solder. And the problem with the motor wires is, is that if your pads don't take the motor wire very cleanly, then you might have an issue with uh, the vibrations causing it to rip your wire right off the thing. And see, I bridged that there because this, this tip's a little too big. The way to solve that is just kind of rub it across and kind of flick it a little bit and you'll, you'll cut that bridge out. One more visual inspection on the bottom. And now we're looking good. Now we're looking like we got nice little pads there. Not the best job I've ever done is you're going to get this over here and imagine you have all four wires. You're going to get this down on top. Now, if you can look on the flight controller, right here is a little arrow. That's pointing forward. You don't have to follow that, but it helps because you can turn that around in beta flight. But if there's a reason, if there's, a, if there's no reason not to, then do it, right? So this is now our front. So now we're determining this is the front. So this is motor number four. 
To do this part, though, you are going to have to stick in your stack, your uh, struts, 18 millimeter struts into these prop guards. And uh, we well, probably shouldn't have done it like that. I was just trying to show you how to do it. But grab yourself some M3 screws. Ooh, we're getting it. We're pushing it. We're pushing it. They did tell me they I wouldn't be in trouble for going over. So, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> now, these are temporary screws, by the way. These are not going to be the final screws. And that's kind of the, the tough part of this build is that in order to make it really streamlined for 3D printing and, and building, um, there, it's also like there's some, let's say, design flaws. It would be better if this was all together or it like fit in and sat there and didn't, you know, fall off without a screw. But certain things were just kind of unavoidable in the pursuit of weight. Everything, you know, weight is the currency of drones. A lot of the decisions I made, I, I knew was not necessarily the best decision, but it was just like, well, I had to save weight. I could make these prop guards thicker or something like that and have them grip the struts more, but then well, they're thicker and they're heavier. Okay, now you're gonna get this bad boy up like this and you see it fits in right there. And this luckily will actually kind of just stay there. I mean, well, you could push it out, but it will kind of just stay there. It won't flop around. You're gonna flip this over. And if you have a soft silicone mat, you're fine to flip your flight controller over. But if you're doing it on something like, like a rock or something, don't scratch your flight controller. Maybe take it off because, <laughs> you know, it shouldn't be too hard to take this off, right? But we're fine on the silicone mat. You're going to grab these. These are M2, four long, three wide. You can also use the cold set ones as well, like 3.2 wide. But I like these because they actually, um, they go in without much fuss. You don't actually don't even need to heat these up because there's a bit of material on the other side of this that will provide, uh, like will stop it from going all the way through. Okay, you need to put four of these in, and this is gonna hold your AIO up against the prop guards. Yeah, see that slot right in, very good. Okay, there we go, you get that on top of there. Change your tip back to an, or 1.5. Now you're gonna get another four M212 screws and go through. Hold it up a little bit. Here, I'm trying to show you. Hold it up a little bit as you're going through. But you often will find that it's gonna push it out. But that's because it's not lined up perfectly. Don't worry. You're gonna just gonna have to try to line that up yourself. Go through, there we go. You also kind of bust through some of the 3D printed hole material. It may not have printed perfectly. So you need to kind of move that out of the way. Okay, and then I generally just do two. One on, on either side, the, the corners. Because you're gonna have to unscrew this and you know, there's gonna be other things you have to do. And, you don't want to lock it all down just yet. Okay, so now that I got those two screwed in, I'm finally ready to grab two more screws. Really, you can just do these by hand. You don't have to screw these with the with anything because these are just to uh, like you know hold it in place as you're working on it. Now, this is the last troll part. Imagine I had soldered all four or I had uh, screwed in all four of those motors. I'm ready to really uh, finish this up. We're gonna get ourselves some surgeon's tools, guys. These are invaluable for FPV. You gotta have them. I, there, I used to say, oh, you definitely might want them. No, 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 you need them. Like you need them there to save your life, save your, your gray hairs. Okay, so you're gonna try to get your motor wires as, uh, as flattened together as possible. That's not necessary, but you know, OCD, I like it. Then you're gonna kind of try your best to put them in the right place. Now I can grab them with my surgeon's tools and I can stick them up through that right there. Let me show this one from the other side too so you see where. Hold it with your thumb flop around, grab them again with your surgeon's tool, and pull them all up. There we go. So this goes through, through that bottom part right here. It's going through this inside circle, not the second circle. Black was a bad idea because it's hard to see stuff, right? <laughs> I should have printed it in white. Uh, but yeah, these go through these slots right here. Okay, now it's important to note that you don't want the wires sticking out really far from, oops, you don't want the wires sticking out really far from the ESC. You want them pretty much up and down. So give yourself some slack on this bottom part. In fact, you can even tape these motor wires now down to this strut right here. You can tape that down and then give yourself a little bit of slack. And then I just kind of push them down just a little bit and then clip them all together, boom. And by giving yourself slack, you're making sure that you don't somehow make a mistake and oh no, my motor wires are too short. Who here has ever had that problem before? You know the pain, because <laughs> then you gotta solder some length on there, and that's the worst. Remember we said that, we said that. Is soldering small wires is the worst. I like to use a um, X-Acto knife, just kind of touch it right there, and then get the other side and touch it right there. 
The reason why I do that, because I don't like getting tools up in there, and it's also hard to grip this wire, and I don't want to pull on the wire you know, with the tool, so I like to grip it like that with my fingers, and that's one of the reasons why I have to keep fingernails now, is that you can just, bam, pull all three of those off, and you kind of started that. This is silicon sheaths, by the way. You can't do this with PVC. PVC is a nightmare. Now, second tool that's an absolute must is Surgeon's uh, Suture Gripper Mick Johnson's. I think that's the official name, by the way. We're gonna pre-tin these wires. This is a really important part that I see people missing, and it's one of the biggest reasons why their solder joints are bad. Pre-tin the wire. Don't heat. Don't get the solder on the uh, on the uh, the tip. Solder. Try to sit, solder the wire tip. Right. Like, don't get it on your actual soldering tip. Try to like have the wire be in between the solder and the tip. Now, make sure you wipe this off because you don't want a huge glob, especially on a big tip like this, for what you're about to do. All right. And this is one of the reasons why I really like these. Let me try to put this where you guys can see it. Is I can take one out and the other two stay right there. And then I take my surgeon's McFlobbers. Grab this here. Now, what this is the most important part is you want to sit this kind of under it and right, like right in line with it. And if it doesn't sit right, don't force it. Push it with your finger, like push it forward so it's kind of complied towards that solder joint. All right. Now I'm going to wipe my tip off and then apply just a little bit of fresh solder. Solder. Shutter. I'm applying some shutter solder, and I'm going to touch it. Wait for it. To, Melt and bam. And that's a really nice little solder joint you can get. It's very important to get solder joints, and from my perspective, uh, really beautiful because customers are gonna look at it and they're gonna be like, they're gonna judge you based off that. It, all that really matters is you get a strong joint. But here's the thing you don't always know if it's a strong joint, but always a beautiful joint is a strong joint. So try to make them beautiful. So right here, I, I, my, my tool is too high up. Now I could try to push that in there, but that's how you get an ugly joint. If you're trying to force the wire while you're soldering it, it's gonna smush that wire, flay it out, it's gonna look like crap. So stop, readjust, make sure that you can get it sitting on that joint with no effort at all. Touch it, come back, inspect, good to go. Okay, but I don't like how far that sticks out. Let me try to show you this. See how that sticks out a little too much? Nope, no good, no good, let's try that again. That's okay, wipe your tip off. Grab it, touch, come off, okay? A little bit of fresh solder on the tip just to make sure that you got some resin in there. Oh, that's good. There we go. Now that's sitting down, straight down. And that's so that the prop guards come off. It's not going to hit those wires. Okay, last one. And then we're going to head over to the Hangout. And I'm going to solder up all four of these. So the next video, you'll see all four of these done. I think that's going to be a good choice. Okay, let's try to get this in the camera view. All right. Also, yeah, you want to grip this with just the tip, just the tip. That is not too shabby, if I don't say so myself. Some nice solder joints. This first one was a little bit jank, but that one's always kind of jank because it's hard to get over on that side because it's kind of leaning to the side, right? Where, whereas these ones are directly down into that slot. But it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And there you go. So you would solder all four motors up like that. And honestly, the hardest part of the work is pretty much done. This is a pretty easy drone to build if you know how to solder motor wires really well. All right, guys, we're going to head over to the Hangout. I hope you enjoy. This is uh, step one of three in building your first awesome world's best uh, tiny whoop, Dr. Quads. McJobber. All right, I'll see you guys at the Hangout. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, hello there. It's at this point that many of you might be asking yourselves, did I just join a cult? It's a perfectly valid question. Just make sure to like and subscribe. I repeat, like and subscribe. Also click up here or over there. Just click somewhere on the screen. It doesn't actually matter where you click. That's the secret.